Joining us now is Dr. Stephen Block of Stanford University. Now, Dr. Block, there's an understanding with scientists that it's very difficult, or it has been very difficult, for research funding in the past decade. What's been contributing to this? There's been a consistent decline in constant dollars for research funding, um, particularly for basic research. And there are a number of reasons for this. Of course, there's the economy, which is in trouble. Uh, but it goes beyond that. There's been an increasing interest in things like translational medicine, the idea of going from bench to bedside, um, in, an effort, in a headlong effort to uh, make this uh, technologically feasible, more money has gone into technology than has gone into basic research. Uh, this is perhaps not the best use of our dollars in the opinion of many of us. There's another problem which has to do with the uncertainty of funding. Basic science requires sure, continuous funding. It requires a level of security about that funding. And in the present uncertain atmosphere of funding, in, in, in particularly in the U.S. Congress, um, there has actually been a shortfall in, fall in dollars merely associated with that uncertainty. We, we all know about the sequester, which has hurt us deeply. Uh, but in addition to that, the, uh, the continuous set of continuing resolutions which Congress has passed have caused funding agencies such as the NIH to throttle back on the available dollars. Uh, also in this climate, we're discovering that young scientists don't want to get into science anymore. Uh, established scientists can no longer um, uh, keep the activities going in their lab. Uh, positions dry up at universities. And increasingly, the burden of funding science is, is being shifted from the government um, uh, to the individual universities, which discover that uh, they are not really in a position to take up all the slack. So there's, there's been a multifactorial uh, reduction in the funding of basic research. And uh, in addition to this, I would also point out that there's concern about the climate for basic research. Uh, it seems to be losing support. It's always something that one has to uh, push forward into the minds of, of um, our legislators, uh, but it's something that is becoming increasingly hard uh, to justify in an era of, um, of, of, of frugality for all. So this is an issue. There are dollars that exist, but they aren't going to basic scientists. Why? The dollars that exist aren't going to basic scientists for a, a num the number of reasons that I just outlined, but it, one of the main reasons, uh, in my view, is that um, the dollars are being spent uh, on increasingly on administration, they're being spent increasingly on technology and on uh, large-scale projects that ignore certain aspects of basic research. And so the traditional man in the lab uh, is finding it harder, uh, a woman in the lab today, is finding it harder and harder to be able to carry out their basic research. Dr. Block, talk to us about your own experiences with research funding. I've had a nightmare experience over the last few years. Um, uh, my, my own work in science, in science, in particular in biophysics, has been very successful over the years. I've won a number of awards. I've been elected to the National Academy. And when I put in my last major grant to the NIH, I received a so-called perfect score of 10 on the grant. You can't do any better than that. The study section also recommended the full funding of my grant, which is something that doesn't happen very often. Over and above that, I was able to receive something called a merit award. This extends the time of the grant uh, from the usual four years to five, and with the possibility of an extension. So on paper, you'd think I would be doing as well as you possibly could. But then the other shoe fell. And over the course of the next five years of that grant, in the first year, there were administrative cutbacks of 16% in the first year on my funding, then 21% in the next year, 27% in the year after that, and finally 35%. I'm now getting on the order of 65 cents on the dollar uh, for the dollars requested under this grant. And as a consequence of this funding shortfall, I've had to uh, zero out all the equipment, all the supplies, all the travel, all the publication costs for my lab. And as of this summer, I'm no longer able to meet the payroll for the people in my lab. That's just the um, tuition fees for my graduate students and their salaries and the salary um, and uh, uh, of my single postdoc. Uh, this is um, epigrammatic of a very, very serious problem. There's, um, there's, this should not be happening, uh, but it is happening. And my case in point is just one of many uh, that are happening in the field. Right now, we're in a crisis mode, and I fear for the future of basic research in the United States unless something's done in the near future to rectify the situation. So Dr. Blog, do you see this situation getting any better in the foreseeable future? I'm pessimistic at the moment, possibly because of my own personal situation. Uh, but uh, it is possible that a new Congress might be elected. It is possible that um, we'll be successful in lobbying for more funds for basic research. 
it is possible uh, that a next generation of scientists uh, will, despite the challenges, um, want to move into the field and, uh, and, and teach us new things. Uh, so I remain hopeful, uh, but still cautiously uh, pessimistic at the moment. Dr. Block, thank you very much for joining us on this very important issue. Thank, thank you. you for it.